We are given the three by three matrix A with entries one, three, three, one, one, zero, and negative one, one, two. We're asked what are the eigenvalues, what are the defects of the eigenvalues, and we're asked to find the general solution to x prime equals a times x. Let's begin by determining the eigenvalues. We do this by setting up the equation of the determinant of the difference of matrix A and lambda I equals zero, and then we solve for lambda. So here we have our setup, where we have, again, the determinant of matrix A minus lambda times the three by three identity matrix equals zero. Simplifying inside the parentheses, we now evaluate the three by three determinant using row two, because row two has a zero entry. The determinant is equal to the entry in row two, column one, which is one, times the determinant of the matrix after deleting row two and column one, and then minus the entry in row two, column two, which is one minus lambda, times the determinant of the two by two matrix after deleting row two and column two. We can stop here because we'd have plus the entry in row two, column three, which is zero, times the determinant of the matrix after deleting row two and column three, which would all result in zero. So now we evaluate the two by two determinants, simplify and factor, which leaves us with the square of lambda minus one times lambda minus two equals zero, indicating the eigenvalues are one and two. However, notice we have two factors of lambda minus one, which means the eigenvalue of one has an algebraic multiplicity of two. To keep track of this, it might be helpful to write lambda sub one and lambda sub two are equal to one, and lambda sub three equals two. But again, the important part to recognize here is the eigenvalue of one has an algebraic multiplicity of two. For part B, we're asked to find the defects of the eigenvalues. Eigenvalues have defects if the algebraic multiplicity is more than the geometric multiplicity. And the geometric multiplicity corresponds to how many linearly independent eigenvectors we can find for an eigenvalue. So in this case, the only possible eigenvalue that may have a defect would be the eigenvalue of one because it has an algebraic multiplicity of two. So if we're not able to determine two linearly independent eigenvectors for the eigenvalue of one, the eigenvalue of one will be defective. So for the next step, we will see if we can find two linearly independent eigenvectors for the eigenvalue of one. To do this, we set up the equation, the difference of a and lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector, and then we solve for vector v. So here we have our setup. We have matrix A minus one times the three by three identity matrix times vector v equals a zero vector. Simplifying, we now need to solve this system on the right. Let's use an augmented matrix and write it in reduced row echelon form. Notice v3 is a free variable. The first row indicates v1 equals zero. The second row indicates v2 equals negative v3. And again, v3 is a free variable. So if we let v3 equal negative one, we have the eigenvector v1, which is the vector zero, one, negative one. From here, we're not gonna be able to determine a second linearly independent eigenvector, because if we select a different v3, it'll be a scalar multiple of the eigenvector v1, and the two vectors will not be linearly independent. So again, we cannot find another eigenvector using this method. As a result, the eigenvalue of one has one defect. Lambda equals one has algebraic multiplicity two, and geometric multiplicity of one because we only found one eigenvector. And two minus one is equal to one, giving us a defect of one. When it comes to finding a general solution to x prime equals a times x, we do need a second linearly independent solution for lambda equals one. To do this, we'll have to follow the procedure below where we'll have to solve the equation to difference of a and lambda i times the vector v2 equals the eigenvector v1. We'll solve this for vector v2 which will give us a second linearly independent solution for lambda equals one in the form shown below. Let's work on this next. Because we only found one eigenvector for the eigenvalue of one, which has algebraic multiplicity of two, we now need to set up and solve the equation. The difference of a and lambda sub one i times v2 equals the eigenvector v1. So I have the setup here. Again, notice the right side is not the zero vector, it's the eigenvector v1. Simplifying, we now need to solve the system on the right, which again we'll do using an augmented matrix, and then write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. We have V1 equals one, V2 equals negative V3, and V3 equals V3. So if we let V3 equals zero, we have the vector V2, 
is the vector one, zero, zero, which we can now use to determine a second linearly independent solution using the eigenvalue of lambda equals one. So this is information that we now have, which also means one independent solution to x prime equals a times x is x1 equals the eigenvector v1 times e to the power of 1t, but we also now know a second independent solution is x2 equals the sum of the vector v2 and the eigenvector v1 times t all times e to the power of 1t. We still need to find a third linearly independent solution for the eigenvalue of two before we can determine the general solution to x prime equals a times x. Let's do that now. Using lambda sub three equals two, we set up our equation. Simplifying, we now need to solve the system on the right, which again we'll do using an augmented matrix, and then method in reduced our echelon form, where one indicates that v1 equals negative three halves v3. The second row indicates v2 equals negative three halves v3, and v3 is a free variable. So if we let v3 equal negative two, for example, we have the eigenvector three, three, negative two, which we'll call the eigenvector v3. So this indicates a third linearly independent solution to the system indicated by x prime equals a times x is x3 equals the eigenvector v3 times e to the power of 2t. And now we can put all these pieces together to write the general solution for this system. We have x of t equals c1 times the eigenvector 0, 1, negative 1 times e to the t plus c2 times the vector v2, which is the vector 1, 0, 0, plus the eigenvector v1, which is the vector 0, 1, negative 1 times t, and this sum is multiplied by e to the t, and then finally we have plus c3 times the eigenvector v3 times e to the power of 2t. This is our general solution. I hope you found this helpful.